Hello and uh, welcome to the uh, Game Investment 101 panel organized by um, Baltic Sea Games. Um, my name is Søren Lass and I, um, I work as a game consultant in the games industry. I um, have been doing that the last five years. Um, before that I was with, uh, with Ubisoft and, and other publishers. Uh, in different countries, uh, Copenhagen, Montreal, and, and, and Hamburg. And I've worked a lot with, uh, with games financing uh, the last year, so I'm very excited to be here with some real experts today uh, so we can um, discuss the, um, the topic about game investments. And um, uh, the, the, reason, or the uh, goal for the panel is, is really to give an overview over um, how do you successfully invest in, uh, in, in, in games? There, there, there's a lot of myths about uh, investments in the games industry, both coming from inside the industry, but also from the outside. And um, so we're trying to, to get a little bit behind those uh, myths today and also give some advice on, as an investor, um, what does it take to uh, successfully invest uh, in the games industry? Um, if you're here as a developer that is maybe looking for some funding and is currently trying to get some hints on uh, you know, how do you approach investors. If you listen carefully, there's also going to be a lot of uh, uh, good things you, you can hear from that angle, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Um, before I introduce uh, you to our um, panel here, um, I quickly wanted to do a, um, a, a short, uh, a short overview over, over the games uh, uh, business right now, because there's a lot of money uh, in the games industry. Um, and um, so I just go on to the first slide here, um, which shows that um, if we look at the games industry in, in total, uh, I mean, it's, there's a lot of, uh, it's a big market, there's, it's booming. The market is now worth, uh, yeah, or making turnover 150 billion euros a year, uh, and it's expected to grow to 180 billion over the next three years. Um, and we are in fact here in the middle of one of the most successful gaming regions in the world. Um, if you look at the, the map uh, we put up there, the um, uh, Baltic Sea, and, and you look at the, the companies we have here, um, uh, it's amazing how many big companies um, uh, are coming out of here. Uh, in this uh, century, um, uh, there's only, from, in, from the Western world, around a handful of companies that are worth over a, a billion dollars. And if you look at um, the companies we have here, there's already uh, three, f three of them on this, on this map. We have Unity from Denmark. We have uh, a company like Mojang, the creators of Minecraft from Sweden, and, uh, and Supercell. Those, those three are really out of five, six companies in the world uh, based here in, in this area. And that is just the, uh, the, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, I mean, you see the other companies up there in Poland. Um, CD Projekt probably has the most expected game that's going to launch next year uh, with the Cyberpunk. Um, and, uh, and there's so many more. There are these superstar cases. Uh, and, uh, but there's also many more other investment opportunities out there in the market. Um, I have a little case I wanted to show you um, coming from Denmark, um, uh, which shows a little bit how the ecosystem here in the area is growing more and more and, and also is spawning some new cases that might not be as famous as Supercell or as uh, Mojang or Unity, but still are very good investment cases. So um, it's a company that's called uh, Ghost Ship Games. Uh, they were funded in 2016. And um, they basically were a team that um, uh, came out of uh, Press Play. That was a Microsoft studio that was closed down in Copenhagen. And um, they got some, some money for their new pr uh, project uh, from the Danish Film Institute and from an investment company called Capnova. And um, so they basically um, created this game that's called Deep Rock Galactic, which is a squad-based shooter with dwarfs, you can say, more or less. Um, and one year after they, um, uh, they were working on this game, uh, they got approached by Coffee Stain Studios from Sweden. Coffee Stain comes out of the game incubator in, in Schöfte, um, had been around for around 10 years, uh, and very successful with a game called Goat Simulator. Um, so they went into publishing, and, um, and they acquired a, actually 35% of, um, of Ghost Ship Games. So the investor that originally went in was bought out already after less than a year and made a very good return on that. So even you know, in this uh, startup scene that there is a uh, possibility to make money as, as investors. They then basically together launched the game um, Deep Rock Galactic less than a year later and um, uh, sold more than 500,000 copies of that game uh, on, on Steam and on Xbox at a price of, uh, I think, $24.99. Uh, so in total, this game will probably have made um, $5 million, uh, no, 
five million dollars uh, in, 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 in that year. Great business case, of course. Um, and then if we go further up the line, then a uh, few months later, uh, Coffee Stain got bought by Embracer Group, then called uh, THQ uh, Nordic, um, who, uh, who basically uh, acquired the whole um, uh, uh, company uh, Coffee Stain. So not just because of this game, but uh, because of other titles that they also had. So it just shows that uh, even in this region, um, you know, things are growing together and, and there's this whole ecosystem of incubators, there's publishers, there's business angels, um, and um, yeah, they're there to make, uh, um, invest, uh, uh, to, to make uh, uh, this, whole, this whole system work. Um, there's a tons of opportunities out there in the market. Uh, we're not only looking at Games. We're also looking at you know esports that's growing right now, and uh, how games are applied in, in the industry. Um, and altogether, we see that even though there's so much money being made, um, there is it's still quite difficult for gaming companies to find money. Uh, I'm out there a lot with uh, with the studios, uh, talking with publishers, with uh, with investors, and especially with investors outside the industry. Um, it's often quite difficult, and we're trying to get a little bit behind. Um, you know, why is it so difficult to get money for gaming companies? What's so special about it, and how do you successfully uh, manage that? So that's sort of um, just a little basis for for our, our discussions that that we have here. So um, yeah, so so welcome to our panel. <laughs> that was a long talk, uh, but uh, but I thought uh, it was good to have some some basic. So basically, I'd like to introduce um, our panel here. And I would like to start with uh, Boris uh, Musielak from Smog Ventures. Hello. Hi. Uh, can you say a little bit about um, how you came into the, um, uh, what's, what, how, how's your, um, how did you come to invest in games and the company you're doing is how, how you're uh, associated to that? Uh, sure. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, that's good. Um, so I'm here for like a month, so <laughs> it's pretty yeah. fresh. Uh, we just launched a fund uh, in Poland, which is going to invest about 20-30% of the money in games. And we've just made two for the first game investments. So this is pretty fresh, but my partner and co-founder in the fund, Paul Bragiel, he's been there for like 20 years, so he's m more like the, the game guy in the fund. Um, but I'm local, he's based in San Francisco, so I'm always looking at the first, you know, uh, at the games and the, at the teams uh, um, the first. And the reason why we do games, it's pretty obvious the market tells us to do it. In Poland, uh, the only consumer, the only like consumer successes that has been global successes are games. The companies like you mentioned, uh, CD Projects, actually worth more than $2 billion now. Yeah. So it's part of those unicorns as well. Yeah. Techland is going to launch uh, in a stock market this year or next year. Also probably with a similar valuation. Huge games, is most of that is in Poland. Development is in Poland as well. There's 10 square games. There's a number of not just premium games, but free-to-play games, all the different types of games. And those are the most successful companies in the tech industry in Poland. So if we do a fund that's mostly focused on Poland and centralized in Europe, it just makes a lot of sense to get into gaming. So that's the main reason. Yeah. Okay. Then we have uh, Stefan Lindeberg um, from Red Dawn Ventures. Um, you also have been investing in, in games for quite some time. And can you say yes, how um, you basically got into that? And uh, I mean, it sounds like a company, but it's only me. So uh, I like the name. There's an old saying, um, red dawn in the morning, sailors take warning because it's going to be windy. It's going to go way, it's going to be wavy. And that's what it's all about trying to build any company. It doesn't matter if it's uh, gaming or any. And I've been working with startups and in investing in startups, my own money and other people's money for 20 years and I've seen all the ups and downs and the crashes and the m bad judgments and the mistakes and um, and but I've, I've worked with game companies for the last six seven years and so I've seen what's what I think is different with game developers uh, compared to other companies as well uh, but I've always loved games and I still play a lot of games and I just told a story here before the session that the, I'm not in the billion dollar valuation yet, 150 million euro is the most valuable of my portfolio in the game sector. Um, I was a small investor in Spotify as well, so that's another one of the big ones. But uh, in the game sector, and it, the latest game released by that company, 
uh, in the credits, I'm listed as board member and quality assurance. And I'm really, really proud over that because I played the games and reported so many bugs. So the team wanted to have me listed as quality assurance as well. I'm, I'm so proud of that. Okay. <laughs> cool. And then we have the um, uh, next person, uh, Juha Hutkalio from Playstack, um, that you joined last year, I think, uh, via your, your studio. Yeah, it was actually, <coughs> so if you look at my background, I started as a programmer long, long ago. That was my first job, in first in software industry, then in games. Then I've been a game designer, story writer, head of incubator, education builder, head of studio. I'm probably forgetting something, but I started my first own company in 2015. And that was acquired by Playstack last year. And uh, Playstack is a London-based company, which is, um, I run the development studio we have in Helsinki, but we also, we, we're mainly a publisher. And uh, we also, in while doing the publishing, we also provide like funding services. So if you look at Playstack structure, it's the uh, Playstack which is doing the publishing part. Then we have a Play Fund, which is actually to fund the companies. And then we have Play Ignite, which is providing like other kind of funding so it is like if you have like income pending on App Store or these kind of things to cover those. Okay, cool. And then we have um, Olesia Majalasko uh, from <laughs> sorry um, from Polka Dot Studios. Um, you're actually a developer. Um, you're doing uh, mobile games for um, for female audiences, but have also like quite a long experience in the games industry. So I um, yeah, I wanted to ask you how is your perspective on on the um, uh, whole investment scene from 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 that angle. I'm I'm the least like well, if maybe <laughs> not the least, but compared to these guys, so uh, I didn't really know anything about games, and I didn't know what to what I want to do when I grow up. Until 2005, I joined a Helsinki-based company, Digital Chocolate, and got into games, and. Uh, I fell in love with people making games and decided, okay, this is what I want to do. But I don't program, I don't do art, I'm not a game designer, so I don't know how to do anything related to games. It was too late to go to school. So I joined one company, well, I got a couple of kids in, uh, in between when fin Finnish game industry was booming. And when I get up out of home like and kids, I decided, okay, what should I do? And I met this company and I said, I'll come work for you for free, just like, give me a chance and I worked for them for half a year and then other half a year they actually paid me and then they went bankrupt. So <laughs> and I was like, okay, not I got, right? yeah, <laughs> not connected. <laughs> One year in, still I've probably nobody will hire me. I'm not, I don't know enough, but I think I have what it takes and I've decided I'll found my own company to, to learn about games. And I got a team, I got the funding, and it seems okay, it's probably meant to be. So, and with the whole idea that there's too many, well, not too many, but enough uh, gaming studios full of guys making games for guys. Let's just not care about the guys and make games for women. So we are 50-50 female, male company because I still like the diversity and <laughs> I don't want to exclude anybody. Um, yeah, so I've read, we've almost three years old. I've raised about half a million plus up another half a million from Business Finland. So that's, that's me. Yeah. And, and how is it when, when you, you go out and you approach in, uh, possible investors? Um, is it easy for you to find money um, or is it, is it, was it difficult? Uh, well, if, as in like m my experience, I think my first funding, it was just being in the right place at the right time. So just all the stars aligned, how I got my pre-seed. But it, it was like a, a, a lot of luck actually. And the rest has been, of course, a lot of work. But I, I think like it's, <coughs> there's plenty of money to be had, but there's also like the luck factor. Are you doing exactly the thing that the investors are looking for? Are you in the right spot? Then it seems to be that the, the stars needs to align. A lot of like investors, they are just at the beginning of something on the, or, when, or they are on the end of like where, but I have too many bets already, so I need to wait for a while until my bets are kind of I realized or something. And uh, being a woman, uh, being a woman, I think it hasn't really affected if if it's been a positive thing, because I'm at least different, doing something different, I think ha that has been a positive thing. So, yeah. I, I don't know. It, it's tough, but it's doable, definitely. Yeah. But 
And, and, and the investors that you have in your company, are they from the games industry? Do they have experience from the industry or, or are they... Yeah, um, I have both. My yeah. first investor was like a, a, another gaming company from Finland. So they put a small money in and then uh, some friends and family put the rest. And then second round was led by Peter Westerbakka from the Mighty Eagle of Rovio. So he, he kind of, uh, he has a big gaming background. But then, and I have Sisu Game Ventures, but then the rest are actually everyday people who just liked my energy and wanted to, I think the main thing was that they wanted, they were interested in games and uh, they wanted to tip their toes into investing in games. And then many game companies, they just like are very similar. And they had like problems, how do I choose? Because they are not very experienced in it. But I was different enough. And making games, our first game was like making Instagram into a free-to-play. So it's like a dress-up, it has real fashion, there was some brand aspect into it. So we kind of understood more about the business of it. So it was easier, I think. So that's how we got half of our angels have no gaming experience. Yeah, okay, good. And, um, and basically, did you find uh, find it more difficult to speak with, uh, with with investors from outside the industry than, or did they join because there were already some people from the industry on, on board? I think it, it affected a lot that we always had a, a lead investor who knows the business. So it's always easier to follow. Uh, but then also, I don't know, I, I speak of course differently to people who don't understand the games and explaining and always before they make a commitment, I kind of remember to say that you need to be ready to lose this money because investing in games, come on, it's it's the most risky thing there is. So are you ready to lose this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is not SaaS business. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a need-based business. Yeah. So okay. Boris, uh, you come from outside the gaming um, industry and, and have now s starting to do your first uh, investments. Uh, there's always this myth that, that uh, you know, the games industry is quite difficult to invest in. Um, how do you see that uh, c coming in now? Uh, is it comparable to other, other industries that you've been working with? So I'm also a developer. I'm, I started as an engineer, then turned into the founder. So I founded two companies and sold the last one. So that, that was my story. So I've been looking, and then I've been running an acceleration program for the last four years. So we have 50 companies, completely different, you know, d different industries. So that's that's kind of the, the background. I've been looking to entrepreneurs for the last few years and uh, recently as a, as a fund, but bef before as an acceleration program. So there is two aspects to it to me. One is the team and here, it's very similar to all other uh, startups. So like A, I would only invest if I like the team. I, I like to like work with the team. I feel I'm gonna have you know good time with them. I don't wanna like spend the like, next 10 years with people I don't like. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that's like a silly thing, but it's kind of, yeah, it's, you kind of have to be like, you have to have a common kind of feel. Uh, and I need to understand that the, the team wants to build something durable, big enough, um, uh, which is hard in gaming. So in uh, in other like in the other startups, I usually see, you know, the pitch goes like that. I want to build a global leader in whatever logistics, uh, energy, something. With the, with the gaming, it's like, oh, I'm super excited about this MMO RPG game, and I want to make it into esports. It's like, man, that's been like t ten years ago. Companies like that were created. How are you going to actually exa exactly do this? It's like, oh, we have this passionate team and we want to do this. It's like, and what's the next, what's your next thing? It's like, oh, this is the thing. So this is probably not the type of company I'm looking for. Uh, the type of company I'm looking for is more like what Olesia said. Like, we have a vision to create, a very specific vision to create a games in a new, in a new sector. And it makes sense. So there is like, there is not many games in that sector. There is something new. You, you can see there is a vision of not just creating one specific game. You know, if it's a bust, what what to do then? Do you, do you like go bust? Do you go like, oh, maybe, you know, if, if you have a bigger vision to create, you know, a studio, then you kind of create value. You, you, you kind of need to have a vision for a company. So this is similar to a lot of companies. You have to have a vision to, to create a company that's gonna last for 10 years, that can go to a stock market, that can be a big success. So not just one game, it needs to be kind of more, so that's the, the, that's the difference, I think. Yeah, okay. 
Um, I know, Stefan, you, you invested in, in, in Fat Shark, um, and uh, um, was that also the team you looked at, or, or, or the project? Uh, uh, definitely the team. I mean, I, I can more agree with the team factor because, I mean, trying to build a company, any company, is really a roller coaster, and it, it takes a team and it takes the right uh, attitude to do that. And because, and I say team very intentionally. I'm concerned if it's one founder. Because when shit really hits the fan and you don't have money to pay salaries or anything, you don't want to be alone breathing in a bag in a corner. You need a team. Uh, and since I want to be part of the team and I want to help them, and that's why I primarily engage with companies close to me, uh, it has to be a team. And the second part uh, is that uh, you want, as an investor, you angel investors specifically, you, you think differently than a publisher. You're not investing in a game. You're investing in a team that over time will, should do, shall do, want to do different, thi or different things or more things or try to, because honestly, most companies fail what the thing they're trying to do the first time. I mean, and I think it's slightly, it, it, overall in startups, I'd say two out of 10 make it. The rest are bust or semi-bust, and uh, and I don't think the, odd, the odds are not better in the gaming industry. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I could say that it's yeah. a much better <laughs> odds, yeah, but but it's not worse either. Uh, I don't know yet. I don't have the data yet. Yeah. I've only invested in eleven companies in the game yeah. ecosystem yet, and, uh, okay. and none of them failed so far. But <laughs> <laughs> been close with. Uh, yeah. you know, honestly, I mean even. Fat Shark today is considered a, a successful company with 120 employees and uh, last valuation 150 million euros. I mean, there were times where we, me and the CEO Martin, we were sitting in the office alone late one evening and we were just going, what the have we done? We basically bet the company on a vision. And uh, this time it turned out to be right, but, uh, and I want to be part of that. And that's yeah. why the team is extremely important. Yeah. That's why I d decided, we decided, because that, that was my first game investment. I've been building companies for more than 10 years before that, but we met, uh, introduction from a mutual friends, and we spent the whole day talking about games we played and things we enjoyed, computer games we had enjoyed and experiences in building companies. It was just an obvious, we have to find a, a way to work together. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you, are, you um, as Playstag, are both a publisher and an, an, and an investor. Um, how do you divide that? I mean, how, how do you have different angles on looking at things when and, and a developer? So yeah, and a developer. So we yes. have all yeah. this possible. And and not so long ago, I was also on the other side of the table trying to find investments and publishing and all this, and yeah. that of course made it the team important in both aspects. Like both for me to have a good team that I could work with and I could rely on, but also like to uh, have that team available for the uh, investments and and publishers. And, and for us, it's like, uh, as a publisher, we're trying to kind of think it's a bit a bit differently. So we're not just thinking of the actual moment when the game is ready and then when you put it out of the market. We're thinking of the more broader thing. So let's say we find a very interesting team we see that has the potential to do something really huge for what's going to be a big thing next in the industry. So obviously that needs to be a team, but that also needs a lot of support and help in all phases of that process. So that's why like Playstack has like a full range of tools. So it's not just having the publishing services, but it's also like funding and, and other kind of tools. We even offer like development help and, and all kinds of possible helps because if we see a project or, or, or team we believe in, then we think like we need to help them in all stages of making that happen. Yeah. Okay. So so um, uh, so you would say that uh, basically as a publisher you can you can help the teams with with, with your publishing knowledge. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. in everybody's interest because publishers know the market and they know what works in in the games and uh, some of the features for developers might seem like they don't make sense, but from the publishers' view they actually make sense because that's what the market might like or the owners might like, and even if the, so it, it's, if of course it's a discussion yeah. and to, to get those in and to get the mutual understanding of what we're actually doing here, why we're doing those things. So. Yeah. And uh, Oleska, uh, your investors, are they very in, in engaged in what you do? Are, are they, um, how, how, are you, how are you dealing with them? Uh, is it board meeting every three months or, or, or are they constantly checking your stats? Um, uh, how, uh, how's that? 
I think I've been, well, except for last couple of months, but I've been very kind of, um, I write a monthly newsletter to my investors. Our board is super small because we want board members to be able to make decisions in like a couple of hours. So we don't want to have a big board, but I try to keep uh, my investors in loop. Uh, but of course, when we were building our first game, which is like Trendy Style, it's like Instagram made it into a free to play game. And it had like aspects of real, real fashion. And we were looking for partners on that. And then there was some tech thing. So Peter Westerbrecker was very much involved. And so we, we soft launched the game in Russia and uh, he got uh, an influencer, a biggest Russian influencer, Sasha Spielberg, to actually launch the game with us for no cost actually for <laughs> us. So we got 100,000 downloads in Russia last end of last year with the game and kind of good, uh, good stats and everything. So we flew together to Moscow. He's pretty busy. He's actually never in Finland, but we found time to do a couple of Moscow trips, a couple of China trips and stuff. So he's been extremely hands on. Now that we are doing a bit different game on next, he's less, but that I know that any time I, I know that he could bring something, he, I can always contact him. I, I, as long as I just use WeChat. That's like yeah. the only channel that he responds to, so. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And, and uh, Stefan, I mean, you have uh, investments outside the gaming industry, but also in the gaming industry. It, does it take more uh, engagement being an investor in the games industry, or would you say uh, it's No, I, I would say there's not a big difference. I mean, it, it, there is not like a sector. But a difference, I'd rather say there is a phase difference. Where are the companies? What kind of problems they run into? So it varies over time. I mean, from near disasters, how do we avoid a crash and burn? Help! Yeah. To uh, we, we, we have this idea we're thinking of, what, which is kind of fussy. Do you want to come stop by the office and let us chat about it? Mm -hmm. So it's the whole... And some companies are very good at using me and some are less good. <laughs> but uh, I mean, sometimes I say I, I pay to work because I want to be involved, so. Uh. Yeah, okay. And, um, uh, and talking about uh, you know, the possible returns being an, an investor in, in, in the games industry, there's this, uh, this word that, that investing in games is a hit, hit business. It's, it's either like that. Either or either. as I said in Schwebda, when we met, I had a presentation in Schwebda. Yeah. The title of my presentation I was Only a Fool, and that was about investing in games. But is it really a hit-driven business where either you, you get a lot of money or you get nothing or, or are there these in between? Yes, but th that, I mean, that's, I mean, if you start a SaaS company providing service to physiotherapists, I mean, it's the same thing. It, either you make it or you don't. Uh, and that's the two out of 10 equation that's similar. Uh, there are different yeah. factors that drive and make it more or less likely that you will succeed. Mm. But the, the, I'd say the odds are pretty much the same. Yeah. And, and about exit opportunities, um, uh, how do you see those? I mean, are, are there more in, uh, there's games publishers, obviously, that buy companies. There's possibilities of, of, of royalties. Uh, uh, what, what kind of possibilities are there in the games industry yeah. compared to others? Yes, I um, mean, from my perspective, I, I invest in the team and the company and not the yeah. individual game. So, I mean, royalties doesn't... Uh, I would say the game industry is not as mature as other tech industries are. I mean, in certain sectors, I know directly... As I, this is a cybersecurity company. Uh, it's reached a point where it's mature to be purchased. I know exactly which 10 companies globally would be interested in buying that. And they have the process, the, the knowledge, uh, how to run that. The, the game industry is not as mature. It's coming there. More and more players like THQ Nordic. I don't like the Embracer name, by the way. Uh, but first I saw it, I started thinking about Brazilian airplanes. But that's yeah. another... <laughs> They're called something similar. I said, what are you doing, Lars? What are you doing? That's a different yeah. story. Yeah. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Exits, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's harder to exit in the game industry at the moment, uh, but I think that'll change. Yeah. Uh, maybe my perspective on the, po on the Polish uh, ecosystem, because this is a bit like, in, uh, specifically in Poland, there has been a big push from both the government and the stock exchange to um, invest heavily on in gaming. So the government has uh, a few billion euro grants 
just for gaming, just for the gaming industry. So a lot of times we would invest, say, half a million uh, dollars, but then or euro, but then the government would put another like four to like two to three million uh, just for research and development of a specific thing into games. And this has been paying off recently. Uh, and then there's been a push on the new Connect market, which is like a smaller like a Nasdaq, like Polish Nasdaq, like a small exchange where we listed maybe 30 gaming companies in the last five years. Uh, so there's been uh, a lot of exit opportunities in, in, the, in the stock market as well. So this is something I'm looking at specifically, uh, uh, you know, in, in addition to, um, to what, what Stefan said about the pot potential exits. But uh, com like comparing to other uh, companies, pretty similar in a way a either you go really big and you just became a sustainable big company worth you know and we, you kind of trying to repeat your success and you kind of have you know came up with some kind of you know formula <laughs> to create those games um or you get acqui hired so you just basically the, some bigger company acquires your team and then depends on what kind of ip you have it's a uh, you know a two three x five x max uh or you basically go go down, and I think the the from I, I haven't seen all the numbers either, but it, it doesn't look like this is a very big difference between uh, non gaming and gaming to me. Uh, but there's maybe a bit more opportunities in gaming, especially in Central Eastern Europe, thanks to the a lot of the money that's that's flowing this way. What makes games kind of hard in, in investment wise is like it's <clears throat> it's not just one specialty; it's like it's tech and it's art and it's business all put together. And then I think timing is also a big thing because if you look back like game industry in, a f in like last 20 years, all the time something new big come like eSports came at some point, it was a big thing. And then that creates some big company which is gonna be the big thing there. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what's in a way we're trying to do in place to, actually, to find that thing before it happens because that's probably like, you know, being on top of the, the wave and uh, being uh, yeah, and predicting that it's like general, really, really like hard. You know, th there's been there's been you know, PlayStation came up, and then you know there's been so many companies that yeah. were created for that. There's been mobile that kind of happened 10, 15 years ago that you know created Rovio and Supercell. Uh, now it's you know there's people thinking maybe AR with Apple's new headset, maybe VR. Still, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but if it goes, then there will be a few companies that are billion dollar companies in the VR um, yeah, in the because they just the take over. The problem is the timing. I mean. Yeah. People made bets in VR already and lost a lot, lost yeah. a lot of money. Too early. Uh, you never too know. Early. It's too early. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was <laughs> asked <laughs> once in a different panel what 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 are you looking for when you uh, look at the team, and I said I want to invest in lucky teams, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and that's half a joke and half serious okay. because I, I I mean you become lucky by doing lots of things, and then you happen to do things that work, yeah. and then people oh you were so lucky Damn. in the right time <laughs> exactly it's a ma i mean that was the 26th game or 52nd or whatever yeah. in rovio's case and instant yeah. success yeah the more yeah and, and there are actually some people that have instant successes and they think they're the geniuses and they're god's gift to humanity i let them try one more time typically they fail the second time so it's uh <laughs> And if they do that now, that wouldn't be anything anymore. No, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> or they do. Somebody did it before that. And, and yeah, same similar failed. things failed. Yeah. Just uh, yeah. Okay, can we say that timing is a is a, is a very yeah, important factor? More important maybe in other industries because we have these short life cycles where every two three years that there's a, there's a new thing coming, and if you're early on that, you have a huge opportunity. But if you're too late. Uh, you might not. But th there are similar cycles in other industry. I think yeah. the cycles are k longer, yeah. but th you have the same. Pr I mean, if you try to really, peop companies were trying to deliver cloud services 12, 15 years ago to the financial industry. Nobody in the financial industry wanted to buy a cloud service 15 years ago. Now they're all uh, screaming for more cloud-based value-added services to their base product offerings. So there were a bunch of companies that were just too early. They had the right ID, uh, but their customers in the market hadn't accepted it yet. Yeah, okay. Ah. There, there's maybe one more thing that's yeah. different uh, that just came to me. So, um, in gaming, like in regular uh, startup, when the first question I ask is, what problem you're trying to solve? 
Yes. In gaming, it's kind of hard, like yeah. it's kind of like, well, people have free time; they want to <laughs> play games. <laughs> uh, that's always the same problem. Yeah. Of course, it's more to it. There is, you know, I would invest in that MMO RPG right now because that's kind of not where the market is going. But m maybe if they create something really big, that's gonna still be a hit. You know, it it can still happen. It won't happen in the say uber eats business right there is vault there is uber eats there's it's really hard to right now like become a global leader in that in gaming it's still possible it's harder but it's still possible so there, there isn't like gaming is not a kind of market when the winner takes it all so that's interesting and if they do best. take it all they only do it temporarily yeah <laughs> that's the that's the word yeah. worst part because like <laughs> All right, we we're in the, well, like on the top now, but then in t t five years they spend all the money and have no exit, right? Yep. So, so that's that that's the harder part. It's kind of projects. So in here, it's more similar to the movie business, spe specifically the premium, the bigger games. It's yep. much closer to the movie business, the free-to-play games. That's pretty to me. That's metrics-driven games, similar to any SaaS business. Yep. That's actually what I hear mostly from angel investors who decide that they don't invest in us is that. Because if they do a lot of tech investments, that's like a portfolio. So one of them will hopefully uh, be a hit. And uh, But if they feel that they can't invest in just one game company, mm -hmm. so they should diversify like, and in invest in several, and that means like, like working for it. Because for many angels, they don't have a network. They don't have as good of a deal flow of gaming companies if they are not into the gaming industry. So they would need to do an effort of... Uh, getting a deal flow and investing in more companies and it's more of an overhead because we are not familiar with it. You, it's much easier to you invest in things that you are familiar with and there's usually enough deal flow in that. So mm -hmm. if you are not like super enthusiastic about games, I kind of understand that you don't go there. It's, it's hard and you need to do your homework. Is it difficult to get a deal flow? Uh, are, are you swamped with ideas uh, yes. and, and, and projects <laughs> all the time? But um, I mean, it, it, it has taken time. I mean, six, yeah. seven years ago, there were a lot fewer game developers and there were no, not so many conferences and events around game developers and financing. But now I could go to one practically every week. Uh, but there, there are a lot of companies that are too similar. They're just, uh, sm if, to me, it feels like just a small tweak to something else. And then I ask them, who's your target audience and how are you going to reach them? And they go, huh, okay. <laughs> so that was a short. Because <laughs> 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 that's really the, the, the we question. We haven't talked about that. We haven't yeah. thought about that, right? Yeah, well, no. Okay, yeah. There, yeah, I mean, everybody. Right. Yeah, every, I mean, everybody's building a game they want to build, and that's fine. And they're building a game they want to play, that's also fine. But you need to find more people. <laughs> and <laughs> if you don't have a credible story, how are we going to find those? <laughs> we have a problem. Sorry, I answered another question, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. the deal flow. So, yeah. um, uh, specifically in Poland, but I think that's kind of the same for Central Eastern Europe. There hasn't been a lot of game specific venture capital firms um so the game designers you know the game developers we used to usually they, they used to going to publisher and that's why maybe they kind of have that mindset on pitching a specific game versus pitching a spe you know the whole vision for so this has been changing recently there's been a, a few funds in poland that just invest in games we we invest also in games so we also invest in other stuff but like 20 to 30 percent of our investments are going to be games uh, so once the the world was out and uh, like half a year ago uh, we we suddenly received a lot like uh, like a lot like saying like a hundred pitch decks in uh, three months um, of different ideas for game studios so to me that's that's like more than I can kind of you know <laughs> really analyze so we need to kind of go deeper into how you know how they're different like what sticks out and stuff stuff like that but there is a lot of people and there isn't Enough funding. I can tell you what to do. You take the hundred, you put them on the table, yeah, and then you do. throw yeah. away half yeah, of that them. That works. Because you want the lucky guys, and the lucky guys are all still on the table. <laughs> I'm happy <laughs> I'm not the only investor doing that. Thanks. <laughs> oh, that's an old joke from uh, Sweden about employing people. <laughs> if you have too many employees, you throw away half of the uh, people looking for the, the role, you throw away half of them because you want the lucky ones. <laughs> I think it's also a thing like if 
forever, I think we're going to have game developers coming up and it's going to be programmers and artists. And maybe there's somebody who knows something about business or maybe nobody cares about that. Yeah. This is, I think this is quite typical for game companies. They come from passion and they come from art vision and, and they look to fulfill that. If there is some okay. of similar in some tech companies. They're yeah. very tech driven. They've invented a thingy and they want to develop that thingy and they haven't given a thought to how are we going to get it into Apple's phones, uh, which is not easy. They tried, been there, done that, didn't work. But I mean, <laughs> if, if there was a, an investor who was, had never invested in games before um, and just wanted to start going into it, what would you recommend uh, as, as uh, uh, um, uh, how, how would you go about it if, if it was today that you would be thinking about doing your first investment? I just actually recently got that question from uh, a couple of guys that made some money in the music industry and they liked the, the creative industry. So they said, I, I want, we want to learn more about the gaming industry because we want to invest some of the money we made. They're the world leading producers of yoga music. I didn't know that was such a thing, but apparently you can make a lot of mo money on making yeah, yoga music. Yeah, yeah. Okay, besides the point. Anyway, <laughs> so what I said, join me in one of the companies. Put in a small amount, uh, put it down as training, uh, and be active. Join us for meetings, come to company sessions, get to know the industry, uh, and put it down as training, basically. That's how, like, uh, how I see it. I think that it's like lacking. Uh, in the industry, I think there's now a lot of like uh, more enough VCs who invest in games and who understand games, but with like the beginning, because you can't go to VCs from the beginning. Well, uh, unless you are like a super soft founders mm. or something. So y y it would be good to create this like angel networks who are, and that would like help that if there was like syndicates or whatever, whatever they are called, that there's somebody lead who kind of goes through the deal flow and kind of like who understands the b business a bit and then these people could put money at that invest for us for like that we, we go where you go and then they learn from the companies and from working and I think that's like that would be so awesome if that ever happened. And then please give us a list <laughs> of these freaking people <laughs> who are willing and know how to invest in games. It kind of happens, but it's kind of informal, right? Like exactly. It's, it's There's very no list. It's, it's, yeah. Again, it's a luck thing. Like, do you happen to know somebody who happened yeah. to know somebody? I think in Helsinki, I really love the approach that Joachim Ahren is like trying to do, that I think he wants to also mobilize the money in uh, people who have done games and have done X but like I think Nordics and Baltics I don't know but there's enough it's, it's beginning to be enough people who have done games and made ga money in games and they're still making games because it's fun but they could put their money also doing like uh, investing but they just don't have time to invest because they're enjoying making games and making that money go like that somebody manages this and puts it to good use to funding other game companies. I think that's a brilliant idea and I really hope that he makes it happen. I, I, I don't know, sorry, if I, but I see that a lot in Sweden right now. Uh, I, I think there's quite a few people who, so who, well have, uh, ahead who of co us. come out of, of <laughs> the, um, uh, you know, people, ex-people from Paradox or from yeah. DICE that, that are now very actively. Yeah, it's um, starting to happen, yeah, definitely. That, and yeah. What? It's definitely happening. Yeah. It's so to, to my Maybe point, Poland I think, is very too. different. So I, I would say there is definitely not enough investment in Poland. Like there is so many people and there is only a few like there are maybe two funds and maybe 10 individuals who invest <laughs> in those funds. So, so a lot of good gaming companies go outside. They, they go to Finland, they go to Sweden. Uh, we actually like we invest uh, with the first two investments. We go with Sisu together, mm -hmm. so we we do consult a lot with uh, people from outside of Poland because there hasn't been a culture of investing in games in Poland. There's been a lot of culture of just publishing and getting. And the publisher would be making a lot of money from those games. They will be usually taking over like third, like more than half of of all the revenue or even IP. So there's been the culture of investing in gaming. There was a lot to do. There was a lot of opportunities to actually, you know, start investing in Poland. So that's, that, that's why I feel this is really a good time, timing to, and, and to you get into you this feel market. And it's also getting more international because uh, slowly yeah. I, I see, for instance, yeah. Swedish people in, in Denmark <laughs> at, at our events. And, yep. and so I think, uh, I mean, facilitating sort of like a Baltic uh, 
yeah. angel network uh, is, is that something the, the gaming industry something? also is very international like the the companies you mentioned you know CD project they employ half of the people who are polish half are from all around the world same with techland some of the first investments is basically non polish teams actually like just like there's like people from all all different new countries so and they all live in warsaw because it's a great place to do games so yeah there's like this has been started to happen, but I think there is still like there is maybe we should push some of that money from from the <laughs> Scandinavia to Central Eastern Europe because that seems like uh, so 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 with Belarus and so with Ukraine as well. It's also like uh, <clears throat> like uh, twenty years ago, nobody would admit openly like I'm playing games. Like it was a bit like oh, I like that, and like Nerd. like maybe like yeah, like maybe <laughs> ten years ago in Finland we were struggling with the same monies with the, the movie industry. The movie industry is still in the couple of millions of part whereas the games has gone to billions and i think now we come to the point there are people who've gained that money from the so it's kind of like almost like a new thing in that sense and you know if you look in uh, just 20 years back it was very very different situation yeah. and i and the same thing happened in the tech industry end of night is early 2000 there were a few big tech exits in sweden where and then those founders invested in new tech startups i mean that's i think that's a natural cycle uh, you have the network you have the knowledge uh, uh, but then I, I also have the firm view that there should be a shortage of money there should be competition there should be a shortage of money if there's not a shortage of money wrong company is going to get funding and some and sometimes I have a problem with government programs, for example, where they create the program aimed at a certain thing and they have no idea whatsoever whether that's the right sector, that the right thing to throw money at at the moment. Um, it always takes too long to react and when they've reacted, they probably should have done it five years ago. And now they're solving a five-year-old problem. Okay, <laughs> unfortunately we are uh, running a bit out of time now um, because I would like to have some questions from, from the audience. Um, but um, yeah, so maybe we can start with that now if there's anybody who has some questions to the panel. I can't see any, anything <laughs> from the other side. We don't see any. Yes, um, I was wondering about this co-financing way. I mean, you sort of started talking about this. To um, When I talked um, about investing, I thought that pe other investors outside the games industry doesn't, don't really know to follow Rovio or uh, you know any other investor. It's not so known who is investing into what. So I think... Uh, if you wanted to, uh, but that's what I understand. There is co-investment, obviously. So if you are a non-game investor and think, like, oh, I would at least do a little bit of investment, um, could I follow somebody who will be in the know, who is a game investor who knows games, and I can sort of trust more in following them? Do, do you understand what I mean? I mean, depends what you want to do. If you want to just deploy money, then you just become a you know, limited partner in a VC fund. That's probably the easiest way to do it. If you want to learn gaming, then yes. you probably want to do more angel investment with, together with the fund. So I would just make friends with people who run funds who are investing into gaming and there is usually opportunities to go to 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 put a small ticket next to um uh, you know to, to to specific early stage investments like but usually the, they need more money than the one the particular vc can give but you were saying that uh, there are very few vc investments into games so the the major investor in games are other games companies if i get that or publishers well, in poland so how do you know in them? poland i think in scandinavia the the, the yeah. question was there, there, were, there is a lot of money so yeah it, and it's changed but if you yeah. look at the, the funds with billions of euros, they like to invest in game companies when they've proven the idea, the concept, the yeah. game. Uh, and so, I mean, if you reach a certain point, it's not a problem. And then you can talk to any big investor in the world with billion dollar, billion euro funds, and they're prepared to invest. Um, so, I, uh, and it, because then you've solved a pro you've shown that you've solved the pro <laughs> you actually solved the problem <laughs> you solved the problem how to spend money and time to somebody okay thank you thank you thank yes hello uh, can you compare investing uh, because you were talking more about investing in companies more like in a startup in 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 order to find uh, like 
wait for the exit. Uh, can you compare that strategy to investing in multiple of the projects instead of uh, the company itself? I mean, I've personally uh, deci decided that I want to invest in the company. And one of the reasons for that is that a, a new team that are developing and publishing maybe their first team own developed game, it's probably not going to be a success. And the team needs time to learn, and that's why you have to have a longer view on your investment. And that's why I don't think investing in one game, uh, it, it decreases the likelihood that I will invest in a success. If I invest in a team that learn from the first game that went so-so, uh, if we if they learn something, then the next game maybe goes okay, and the third game because that's the reality. The reality is not the runaway success of your first game, and that's why I want to invest in the team uh, and be there when the third or fifth game makes it. The the other part to this is that usually, the f even if the first game is successful, even if it makes say five million euro, you know five million euro when I invest like half a million, that's still not enough for me uh, because 5 million euro, that makes the company yeah. worth whatever. So I, you know, I, I'm looking for an exit, say 20x when I invest very, very early. So it needs to be a company that creates a number of games. So investing in projects makes sense if you have a different investing perspective for venture capital, usually, you know, it's more or less one, each project that you invest in ha need to have a capability to return the whole fund. Uh, so it needs to be a huge success. And one game rarely would be uh, this one success, especially the first yeah, game of agree, a studio. Agree. And a uh, leading question, have you found any problems with the companies not wanting to give an equity, basically, uh, that they are fine? Uh, that How to say? No. No. OK. <laughs> I think maybe we can take one more question <laughs> over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, you were telling Boris that you only invest in kind of teams that you like. You don't invest in teams that you don't like. More and, or less, uh, yes. More or less, yes. yeah. <laughs> what if <laughs> what if you knew you knew that uh, this team that you didn't like would be the next supercell, would you invest anyway? How, if, how would I know? If I knew oh, it. Just the intuition. <laughs> if I had a time machine, if I knew it, yeah, I would invest. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, but usually I don't know. So, you know, uh, that, that's, that's the, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in my experience in all industries, if it's not a good team that work well together, and sometimes I've started fights in team, Hmm. asking questions when it became apparent that they had different ideas on what the com what company were they trying to build, what game were they trying to build, and it becomes obvious and the three founders, they don't agree, and I say, thank you very much, you guys talk together and call me when you agree. Yeah. Uh, because that, that's a, a recipe for failure. Yeah. But so what is a good team then? I'll What's a winning <laughs> team? <laughs> no, but what I, what I was actually referring to is even if the team I can see the chemistry within a team, but there is no chemistry with me yeah, and the team. True. I see they have different values, like they have different ethics. They have, you know, I just know that we're gonna really be deep in trouble if something goes wrong. If and I need to step in, I need to help them. And I, if I know I don't want to really work with, I don't even <laughs> wor want to spend time with them. It's gonna be a nightmare for everyone. So even if this team is successful. You know, I, I there is, there is a, you know, as an investor, having a privileged position, we can actually make a decision to, and there is usually, at the very early, you, you, you have no way of knowing. So, you know, that's probably the easier decision to just go with those people who you feel you're mm -hmm. just going to have a common value set with. That's so, it's, so it's more like a question of feelings, not asking the team some questions. It's a, question of, yeah, it's a, it's a combination yeah. of a lot of things. And mm -hmm. then in the end, I mean, if you, I, I, I started a VC fund as well uh, um, some years back. And what you do when you do early stage investment, you, you trust your feelings and then you turn them afterwards, you 
put something in, in writing that has nothing to do with feelings. You talk about the market and blah, blah, blah. And, and, so you, but you trust your feelings and your gut, and then you try to turn it into logic in a piece of paper to motivate to other people why you make the investments. Yeah, and the feeling comes part of like uh, how well you feel you can work together with these, how yes. well you can hit the goals with these people. That's, that's probably where you get the certainty and, and this. Yeah. yeah. And, and are, is, are these people I could fail together with? I mean, uh, could, could we struggle and, and yet come out of it? Could we fail together and then go out and have a beer together and say, hey, damn it, but at least we had fun. And yeah. We'll be even better. Yes. <laughs> One question I would ask, I usually ask myself is, do I want to work for those people? Yeah. Would I want to intern for this company if I was younger, for example? That's usually a good, okay, if I do it, if I want to work with them, that means, you know, at least, even if they fail, it's not going to be a, yep. you know, my LPs would probably be different. But <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. And that's always like, that's how it is uh, in, in investment. And I think that's like, Partly, I don't want this to be a discussion about women, but that's partly what creates a bit of a problem for women to raise funding and why female teams have, they just raise less funding because if it's still a bit of a bro club. Uh, it's, it's, it's natural and like, you guys were you've been talking about going to beers and stuff, so I, and I, it's and you probably hey, need. I, 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 yeah, I me mentioned to you, I, I have beer. one company that's <laughs> only women, and I drink yes. beer with them as well. Yes, it's, okay. <laughs> it's okay, but I, it, it's just like I what don't if feel I didn't drink beer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> then I, then, here. yeah, then I then I'm then probably no. not neutral. I don't anymore. feel that I have ever like been denied money just because I'm woman, but I, I sometimes consider because like. There's a lot of this networking events, and when people are friendly with like developers, investors, and the, the network and the relationship it builds, it's not like that I send you a pitch deck now, we have one meeting, and then based on your gut, you do a, a, like a decision. It, it's a longer way, and the more touch points you have, the easier it is. Agreed. But I just feel sometimes that for me to just like, on networking, and be friendly with all these male investors, <laughs> I, it, it's, <laughs> I just can't do it. And sometimes it feels like, I'm, I'm really liking that there's, it seems that in Finland, every VC is getting their woman into her. And I really, it makes such a difference to pitch to a woman. It, it's just, I just relax, but I can discuss more freely like with women. And if there was a networking and I could just network with women, it would be so freaking much easier for me. That's, that's, that's <laughs> partly a reason why I actually invited uh, a woman into our fund. So a woman is a, yes. my, yes. is a GP in our fund. <laughs> And it's, it actually makes a difference because it's just not more natural for, de for, for women to pitch to women. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't, but, it's but it, is. <laughs> it is. So yeah, so it's th that, that's a big, uh, that's an edge for us because that's we the only fund yeah. in Poland that I know of yeah. uh, with a women GP. So if there's any women here who would like to go into... Uh, and if you're like so intimidated by me, very well to Diana. To She's good too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. Anyway, um, just before we give a big round of applause to the panel here, I just want to say that it's over, but it's not over <laughs> because um, there is the Baltic Sea Award ceremony going on and, and uh, you will actually have uh, yeah, three quarters of, of the, the panel here, uh, there. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a coincidence. Um, it's a joke. <laughs> I know. Um, so um, there you can pro see how these things we discussed maybe work in practice. So, so hopefully to see you there later. And I think we have some very good points coming up here. So I hope you, you, you took away some maybe new perspectives on some things in regards to investments. And uh, yeah, let's give a round of applause to our panel here. <laughs> <laughs>